Oh, did you see that? Mm. It had something come up from under the kelp. It wasn't a kelp. Oh, yeah, thing. he was looking at it, looking for it. That ride over was quite, uh, quite the experience. Yeah. Yeah, you got to pay to play at San Clemente Island. Wouldn't want to be another 30 feet in there, huh? No, not at all. Look at all the boilers. Yeah. And that's what's cool, you know, you'll watch these waves come in and they'll expose basically the whole setup and you'll be able to pick your spots. And you'll notice too, with the clarity here, you'll see the dark spots and those are the boilers. We're uh, fishing a shallow shelf that runs along the beach here and uh, basically the waves will come in and break and create a foam over the top of it and that kind of activates the fish. And uh, we have a combination of elements here. We've got a little bit of current pushing the kelp in towards the beach. So it's good for providing lanes for retrieving the baits back through the kelp. And that's where the fish are stuck in their little ambush points facing out. When the baits come by, they'll come out and eat it. But uh, this is pretty much prime time stuff right here for calico bass fishing. Shallow water, combination of conditioning and element. And uh, I think our water temp's just under, or, yeah, just under 60 degrees today. So. Just watch out for the rug waves. Yep, watch out for the waves. This is where they live, right here. All he's got to do is bite. There he is. Fish on? Yeah. Come on. He's got a buddy. Nobody's with him. Decent fish. It's a decent fish. Yeah. Nice fish. That's a grown calico there. Yes, sir. San Clemente Island Calico. Rock and roll. Such a beautiful fish. Yeah, those are different than the color ones over there. Huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Got some slackening. That's a beautiful fish. Well, welcome to this episode of Addict to Fishing. We're here with Justin Reynolds. Good morning. And, and uh, we're fishing San Clemente Island for these guys right here. They're called Calico Bass, and that is an absolute beautiful fish. We'll toss him back in. Let me see if I can catch me one. In an area like this too, where we kind of get away from the boiler rocks and all of that turbulence, you get into these sand flats, you got a really good shot at a California halibut. So, and there's big fish here on the beaches, you know. It's not too uncommon to catch a 15 to 20 pound halibut over here on these beaches like this. You have to be bouncing the bottom though? Yeah, you gotta bounce the bottom, but you know, depending on if the sun comes out, we might have a shot at one coming up and chasing bait. There's oh, there one. you go, look at the school, look at the followers. See there it? There he is right there. Nice. That one, had, that, that one had three with them. So I break ice. Too bad it's a little tiny one, though. That's all right. You <laughs> got to get that out of the way. Little calico. Calico bass. Get out of here. On that note, y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with Justin Reynolds right here on San Clemente Island. Unbelievable place. Not another boat in sight, except for our buddies right down there that came over with us. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Yeah, I can feel him on there. Get out of that kelp. Looks like something out of Jurassic Park. You know? Yes. Especially with these low clouds. Well, this is what we're looking for. Laid down kelp with some water over the top of it. A little off-colored water. This is so much like bass fishing, a bunch around a bunch of lily pads. Just got to pick a hole, hit it, and then swim it across the hole, let it dive into it, drop it down, pull it up, drop it down, pull it up. You never know where you're going to get bit. So you got to expect a bite on every single cast, no matter how tired your arms get from casting. <laughs> You know, I kind of relate it to flats fishing, you know, when you're out flats fishing, you got that checkerboard bottom where you have grass and then the sand patch, little potholes, cast it out as far as you can, bring it back over one of the little holes, drop it in, just like, just like flats fishing. So, what did you say, Justin, 60 foot of water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so right now we're uh, coming up into about 32 feet of water, coming up towards the beach. There's a the fish. Yeah, Blair. I can feel him on there. Get out of that kelp. Yes, sir. That's a peacock bass. <laughs> nice fish, Blair. Is that about the. Ooh, God, I'm about to swimming again. 
Got an average size one in here? Or they get monsters? Oh, they get monsters for sure. So what's the, what would be a big, big peacock bat? Um, peacock. Here, I call them peacocks because they fight so much like one. But uh, for a calico, what would be the biggest that you'd get in here? Ah, uh, shoot, you got a chance at anything from 10 to 14 pounds on this island. I couldn't imagine 14 pounds of what they pull like. Uh, I can't either, but that's why we come, you know? The biggest one I've got from here is, you know, a little over nine pounds, and man, that's a strong fighting fish. Yeah, you ever been peacock bass fishing? No, sir, but I'd love to. Is that an invite? Uh, well, sure. <laughs> you take the tickets to Brazil, and uh, I'll come along with you. Right, let's go. <laughs> let's see if we can get another one of those dudes to eat. Yeah, there's got to be more fish around. Pretty incredible place, man. This is beautiful. So awesome. Different kind of dunes than what I'm used to. We're just hitting another spot right here, doing the same thing, fishing the kelp. Basically got my uh, got my airhead here, rig weedless, run it through the kelp, drop it down in all the little holes that you see, kind of like what we were doing way out deep, and uh, catching fish. We'll see what happens. There he is. All right, here we go. Uh, Double up. Nope. Guys, down in the kelp. Oh, look at the followers. There was a bunch with them, man. Look at the color of that fish. So gorgeous. That is pretty fish. Come here, buddy. A lot of followers down there. Look how orange his jaw is. You ever keep him eating? Oh, this is one of the best eating fish on the coast, but slow to grow, so we let them go. Slow to grow. Slow to grow, let them go. For the most part. If there's a occasion to celebrate, like fishing with Captain Blair Wiggins, sometimes we keep them, but today this guy's probably gonna swim free. Sounds like a good celebration to me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I love eating fish. It's a beautiful fish. That is a gorgeous fish. You wanna keep them? We can. Yeah, I'd like to keep them. Okay, yeah, let's keep a couple. This is actually perfect size. Our slot, that it's not really a legal slot, but we typically go between 14 and 17 inches, and this is probably a perfect size fish nice. right here. Huh? You shouldn't be able to wind through any of this without getting a fish. It's pretty crazy. What kind of bottom structure we got going on in here? Basically, it looks like the beach till about 20 feet out, and then it'll just go to sand. How deep, how quick does it drop off? Uh, within like 50 yards of the shoreline, it drops from probably like, you know, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and where we're at, probably like 20, 22, something like that. And another 50 yards, about 200 feet. Yes, sir. <laughs> you ever have any tuna swimming along the shelf out there? No, but there's yellowtail that frequent the front side of this island a lot. Pretty popular area for uh, the sport boats to come target yellowtail. Unlike our yellowtail, their yellowtail look like, uh, what, amberjack? Yep, just like them. And they taste a lot better than amberjack from what you said, right? Oh, uh, they're delicious. Or they make, uh... Perfect for ceviche. Yeah, they make sushi out of it too, don't they? Mm-hmm. It's definitely a nice exotic bycatch when you hook a yellowtail. Ooh, that's a big ol' hit. Nice. Nice. I yanked it out of my hands like we were talking. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's a good fish. A mavenera. He inhaled it too. That's a that's a taco. That's a taco. Oh yeah, that's a taco. <sighs> it's amazing. They remind me that hit just reminds me so much like a peacock bass. It's unbelievable. Which is just whack. That one almost yanked it out of my hands. And caught him on the airhead. Nice little fish though. But uh, I'm gonna re-rig another airhead. Y'all stay tuned, we're gonna be right back with some more addictive fishing. And some calico bass. Let's go then. There he is right there. He's whacked. That's a good one right there. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. You're not invited to eat blue crab. <laughs> this is just not right. 
Well, welcome back, folks. We have gone to spot after spot, and we're still tossing the DOAs, and they're absolutely tearing them up today. They absolutely are. Is this something like you throw normally? Yeah, we fish uh, jerk, jerk bait style baits like that, soft baits like that. And, well, I saw uh, some of those big baits that you had. They look like those stuff they throw in what the Castilla Lake. Oh yeah, for those big, giant uh, large mouths. Yeah, big big swim baits. We fish anything from like five to eleven inch swim baits for these fish. But uh, these five to seven inch jerk bait or type soft baits work really well, especially in you know when the fish are being finicky. Yeah, you can fish them a little bit more, you know, a little slower, and uh, almost finesse them. So more of, a, more of a type bait where they're hitting it out of, they're hungry for it instead of a uh, reaction bite. Yeah, absolutely. There's one. Nice. Nice, Blair. Look oh, he just pulled off. Did he? Dang. That kelp hit's pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. It pulls back, too, under the right conditions. Oh, there you go. There you go. Hit it right where you're supposed to, too, at the edge of the kelp. Good size one? Ah, uh, no. Nah. Oh, he's trying to shake his head, yeah. There he goes. Oh, they look just like a piece of kelp. Yeah. <laughs> Same color. Kelp bass. Oh, a double. Hello, oh, I got a piece of kelp. Awesome. That's a chunky, huh? Well, that's a taco. <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> Right where he was supposed to be, huh? Yeah, right where he was supposed to be, on the uh, outside edge of the kelp. But it's giving me hope that we'll find some more in here. I hope so. I'm ready to see one of those six or eight pounders. Yeah. Stretch my string. I'm ready for one of them to rip your arm off. I'm waiting. That so, last one I hooked about yanked it out of my hand. Yeah. So I'm going to put him in the, uh, the old ice chest. Drop it, man. We'll be eating good tonight. If you say they're tasty. Hey folks, want to take a little break away from the action. I get a lot of people ask me, how do you keep your boat so clean? And it's with Starbright products. Three products that I use possibly the most out of any Starbright products has to be the black streak remover, the rust stain remover, and the mildew stain remover. One of the first products that I go for every time I wash the boat is the non-skid deck cleaner with PTF in it. And one thing the PTF does, it has Teflon in it and it'll protect your boat from the uh, ultraviolet rays out there and keep it looking new. You know, one of the best products out there I think Starbright makes is the Startron Enzyme Fuel Treatment. It counteracts all the damaging effects that ethanol does to your engine. And when I'm running two cycle motors, they make the best TCW3 oil out there for outboard two-stroke motors. One of the best ones I use at the house right here is the no damp dehumidifier. I put that in my closets at home, anywhere where it's dark and can be damp. Also works great in your consoles, inside your hatches, remove all that humidity that's in there. I smash a lot of bugs with my windshield, get them all over the front of my truck, and one great product out there that I use is the bug off. Absolutely eats the bugs off of there. Little light scraping on it and it comes right off. They have Boat Guard, Odor Guard, Spider Away. And not only does Starbright make the best cleaning products and marine products out there on the market, they also make the best tools to get the job done. This is just a touch of what Starbright products has to offer. If you ever get a catalog, they're about this thick, highly recommend it. They make everything from tie down straps, bungee cords, you name it, it is in this catalog and Starbright makes it. Right there, nice little hole. It'll take us in closer to that kelp edge, just a little bit more. Like in where that buoy is, and we'll run parallel to that kelp edge. Where we can cast past it because you got that weedless on. Typically, these fish over here love the sunlight. It obviously warms up the uh, water temperature and kind of just brings the whole kelp forest to life. So. We're moving down the front side of the island. We gain some water temperature as we're going further south on the island. Now the sun's out, we've got a couple fish, and uh, it just pretty much activates the whole kelp forest, pretty much. There he is right there. He whacked it. Nice, get him. That's a good one there. Thank you, Lessie. In the kelp. Get him out of here. Come on, man. Get out. Hey, there he is, there he is. Oh, he's in the kelp. Oh, better fish on nice oh, Nice fish. Woo! Like catching a little grouper in shallow water. 
That's why they're not eating. Look at this dude's belly. Looks like my belly used to. He's full. But he wanted the $100,000 color. You know why we call that the $100,000 color? That's what you used to win? That's what, that was the color of the cow I was using. There you go. Another nice chunk from uh, San Clemente Island. And what a fishery this is. I tell you what, if you've never fished around the kelp like this, just you got to pick your cast out, hit holes, drop it in, and uh, eventually you're going to get payday like that. But that's awesome. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with some more addictive fishing. Justin Reynolds in San Clemente in Southern California. Let's go then. There he is, right nice there. Nice fish. He come right out. Yeah, I saw that thing eat it. The old bait buster, brother. Nice. On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what Justin and I were out there throwing at those calico bass. And what a fun fish to go out there and catch on San Clemente Island. Out basically a remote desert island, basically is owned by the military, so you're not gonna see a ton of people out there. Had Justin pretty much throwing the bait caster because that's what he likes to throw out there. This is a 7.9, rigged up with 30 pound test fins wind tamer and uh, using 30 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon with a nice heavy DOA jig head on there. And I want to just say I was using the Premier out there, the Premier fluorocarbon, just because that water is super cold out there and that Premier is a little bit more limber and gives that bait just a little more action as you're dropping it down. I was throwing the 7.9 inshore model. This is the same rod I use for redfish and trout inshore. I had it rigged with the 20 pound test fins wind tamer and I had this one also rigged with 30 pound test blue label Seaguar fluorocarbon. Now the jigs we were using, these are the five inch jerk shads by DOA. And I was using a super heavy head because we're in real deep water, dropping it right down those kelp beds and giving it nice quick jerks back up just to get that fish's attention, make him come over and take a look at a DOA, something he hadn't seen before, and let him eat. Got the job done with both models of rods, all the fins, just an awesome place to go fish. Highly recommend it if you ever get a chance to go down there and do it. Remember one thing though, every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Got a few more casts here and see what we can do. The weather's starting to change on us pretty good, huh? Yeah, some white caps out there. Look, we're flying our kelp flags. Wild looking seaweed there. Guess these balls would keep it uh, floating on the top, huh? What's the range of these calicos in Southern Cal? Are they just here? Are they all up the coast or what? Well, the calico range from as far south as a hundred or a couple hundred miles into Mexico and all the way up north to the Columbia River in Washington. And uh, what's crazy is with that vast of an area to, to occupy as a fish, really what makes it so special is there's, it's limited to only a couple hundred anglers, if, if that. You know, like I said earlier, like look around. I mean, there's no other boats out here. Yeah, we've been you swamped know? by other anglers today, huh? Yeah, really, <laughs> the pressure. Oh, there he is. Right there, huh? Oh, he came off. Ay, ay, ay. That was a good fish. Yeah, it kept going. There he is, right nice there. Nice fish. He come right yeah, out. Yeah, I saw that thing eat it. Ugh. The old bait buster, brother. Nice. The old bait buster does the trick. Well, Justin, I don't like them white caps anymore, and I like uh, <laughs> getting beat up. But uh, what a day. What a day. If y'all ever get a chance to do this, you got anybody that lives in Southern Cal that says, hey, come out to San Clemente and catch a big fish, catch a bunch of fish, take them up on it because I tell you what, it's a lot of fun. Don't forget about the website, addictivefishing.com. And uh, that's about it from Southern California. We'll see y'all next week. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. There you go, that's good TV. Nice, Blair. Look oh, he just pulled off. Did he? This is just a wee little calico. Right there, huh? Oh, he came off. 
small school. Oh, there goes a bait. 